So uh, here I am. I'm in 3D Coat. Uh, so anyone who's kind of followed me for a little while, you know that this is my primary sculpting tool. Uh, so what's neat is this is the new version of 3D Coat. So it's still in beta. Um, I've tested it a little while ago, uh, but they have a more recent build uh, that is available. Um, so I'm going to be today kind of putting it through its paces, trying out some of the new tools. Uh, it may crash on me at times just because it is beta. Uh, but I'll just kind of highlight what I think is cool um, and some of the new functionality and, uh, and maybe hopefully make something that's kind of neat, nice, nice to look at. Uh, so here I go. Uh, I'm probably going to turn off my camera here. And my kids are sometimes loud, so just be mindful of that. So here I'm testing out uh, one of the new tools. Uh, so I'm in voxel mode, which is the kind of free sculpting mode in uh, 3D Coat. Uh, this is what initially kind of made me fall in love with this program. Uh, as you can see, I don't have to worry about polygon distortion or anything like that. Um, I can sculpt very freely. Uh, 3D, uh, ZBrush is starting to kind of try to do some of this, but it, it can't do that. Uh, and I find even now some people will have their issues with sculpting in 3d coat uh, but i think if you're being objective about it truthfully uh based on my experience with both pro applications and just what i've heard from other people uh, it's actually a lot of ways easier to start in 3d coat uh to, to map something out um and where people will differ more is you know where you want to finish things off you know um, in terms of the sculpt uh so I'll generally do everything in 3D Coat, uh, but I know there's people who will start, they'll map things out, block it out initially in 3D Coat, move to ZBrush uh, to do the quad based sculpting, right, with subdivision levels, um, and, and unwrap it somewhere, uh, possibly in 3D Coat, and then texture it somewhere, possibly also in 3D Coat. Um, so, uh, it's kind of a versatile tool. Uh, what I'd like to see is for the kind of the more polished level of sculpting to become more competitive with uh, with Zebra. So that's kind of one of the things that I'm looking for. Um, and I think it's coming. Um, there are a ton of really cool additions uh, and I'll talk about some of them uh, today. Uh, I may not get to all of them, but um, definitely I'll touch on some. Again, just be mindful. I might run into some bugs and, and crashes. Uh, and that's the nature of this being a beta software. So, um, okay. All right. So I really, at this point, have absolutely no idea what I'm trying to make. Um, just kind of fooling around with the tools, uh, seeing what they do. Uh, this is like, again, uh, a new voxel based, uh, clay brush. Which really feels good. Um, I guess if I were to comment on it, I would like to have more depth. Uh, I'd like the depth to more closely match the uh, the alpha, and I can't sure if that is the case or not. But um, I'd like to be able to make larger kind of uh, changes more quickly. Um, so I can try some of the other. Parameters. I don't know what the degree slider does. Okay, so that's just how subtle you want to make it. A lot of times in 3D code, you can actually go beyond whatever the uh, limit is if you just actually manually punch it in. So if I hit 400 here, and that's kind of giving me more closely to code what I was kind of hoping for, like the ability to make really big wholesale changes. Uh, if I wanted to make a leg or an arm 
with a tool like this, that would be kind of neat um, to be able to do. Um, so creatures and things like that uh, become a little bit easier. So yeah, so uh, right now the slider only goes to 100, uh, but uh, it feels better if I can go beyond that. I'm just going to actually put a message out here on the 3D Coat forum just to let them know people that I'm streaming. Right, let me get uh, my Twitch stream up as well, so bear with me for a moment. Uh, let me mute it. get a link to my stream here share copy URL okay sorry guys I'm not super savvy with the social media and streaming and all this kind of stuff all right so Right, so all right, so let's continue. Um, so if I want to make something that looks good, I will probably at some point have to uh, look at reference or design something or something. Uh, I find that it is very hit or miss for me if I just jump in and um, start making things. Uh, but if I persist long enough uh, and focus on things like the forms and the shapes, I will eventually get to something uh, that maybe is kind of interesting. So again, I'm trying out this brand new tool, uh, which is the base clay or the clay engine brushes. Uh, it's been noted that uh, this is not a final. Um, let me press uh, another hotkey I have here, Control Plus, which is basically subdivide the layer or increase resolution, re increase resolution over here. Um, so basically go back and forth between low and high. This is kind of nice because it smooths things out a little bit. It's not as, um, Carvey as this one. Let's go to 100 here. Let's make a quick comparison. Uh, this is a little square, it feels like. Uh, wet clay. Yeah, a little bit softer, it feels like. Um, it's because it's smudging simultaneously. Let's pump this value once again. Okay, so again, you can see we can uh, work in here, kind of affect more strongly the silhouette. So that's what I'm looking for at the beginning stages of a sculpt is like, how can I make a silhouette that looks good? Another thing I've done um, in geometry, I've also turned on use CUDA, CUDA, CUDA Smooth Boost and, oh, I didn't turn this one on, Accurate Smoothing, um, and then Cast Shadows. I just like to have these all on. Uh, sometimes I'll turn Cast Shadows off, but you see with it on, I can have a better uh, sense of the, the form, uh, the volume. Um, with it off, it's a little harder to read. Um, truthfully, with it off, I, if I were to leave it off, I would use a matte cap for sculpting versus a, one of the PBR shaders. Because um, just again, based on the way the lighting is, it's, it's a little harder to read the form um, unless you turn shadows on. Uh, so again, working very broad strokes, looking for some kind of silhouette that would be interesting. Um, it's a bit of a hit or miss approach that I'm taking here. Uh, but again, I'm halfway just testing the tools and seeing what can be done. Uh, maybe I'll commit to making something that uh, leverages or takes advantage of the fact that um, that we have the ability to carve away. And maybe I'll make something with a 
kind of a punch a hole through it. Something that would be harder to do in another sculpting application. Right? So we're usually not used to seeing stuff with like holes. But let me just kind of take a moment here to stop and think about the silhouette and the form. Uh, so again, just having fun, just having fun for now. I'm not going to be too self-critical at this point. Um, I will at some point want to kind of dial into something, but just going to kind of sculpt freely and see if at some point I see something that, uh, that strikes me and makes me want to uh, commit to an idea. So again, this is really actually fun and, and powerful, uh, really interesting to just work with the virtual clay in this way. Holding control, uh, unlike ZBrush, I believe in ZBrush control will allow you to, to um, get a mask. In 3D Coat, it's, uh, it basically does the reverse function Shift will smooth, just like pretty much every other sculpting application. And I think right off the bat, I've got something that's probably just got a little bit too much going on. So I'm just gonna smooth it out. Again, I'm about 50 or 100,000 triangles here. Um, with CUDA Smooth Boost, I can get really kind of quick clean smoothing operations you'll notice in voxel mode if I smooth here eventually this will kind of just reform back to its normal state or a closed version of itself um, <clears throat> so I'm just trying to get rid of any kind of anything kind of bumps or ridges that uh, don't add uh, they're just kind of arbitrary they're just there uh, so I'm simplifying, seeing if I can get a nice, clean silhouette. This bump here doesn't really add anything. Let's get rid of it. Um, and I find that, you know, the best sculpts, at least for me, are when I have complexity kind of based on something more simple. So I have a simple kind of appealing graphic silhouette, uh, and then I kind of go in after and I add the uh, complexity and, and whatnot. Uh, so anyways, here I am uh, and I haven't even used like one of my key staples, which is the sphere tool, but, uh, that is also one of the tools that I would use to, um, and I could just dial down the degree here. I'm feeling that that is too powerful of an effect. Let's smooth it out. So I think the thing that, you know, uh, if you're coming from say ZBrush or something else, uh, maybe Blender for sculpting, the thing that might throw you off in 3D Coat is how drastically you can change the mesh at any given time. And um, I think that is maybe a little disconcerting to some people. I think you have to be mindful of the fact that uh, it works subtly at times. Um, broadly at broadly at times at the beginning and then more subtly um, as you go uh, so we have thick layer here so again I'm just gonna test this out see what it does and what I'll do actually now I'll just make a new layer uh, I'll use the sphere tool uh, and this is what I would typically do when I start things out uh, I'll start with the sphere tool I'll make sure my e panel setting is set to thick to thin uh, and then I can let's hide this you know then you can kind of map out your creature or whatever it is uh, kind of get that silhouette so I kind of always make like alien creatures and if you look at my kind of file I have alien number one alien two alien three uh, monster one monster two monster three uh, just because it is so fast and easy to kind of map things out like this um, using the tools uh, and we've even gotten better tools uh, as well for uh, doing more of this kind of uh, functionality. 
So, uh, so again, I'll use this. I have a 1.5 million triangles here. I'll resample this lower. Uh, and then I'd probably go in with my move tool. Another cool thing uh, they've added, uh, move topological. Uh, this is, again, a staple in most sculpting applications. Sadly, it was missing for a long time from 3D coat. Uh, but now it's been added and that is a very, very welcome uh, addition um, and it makes the kind of creation of sculpts and meshes that much more uh, fun and controlled, I would say. Okay, so here we have this. Um, When I use the move tool, uh, I'll oftentimes go in with my, so you can press T to bring up that uh, alphas panel. Uh, I'll often go in with these, some of these guys. Let's map things out again, just explore. Uh, but I like being able to do this pinch, kind of more specific move operation. So this is how I would typically work. Uh, what I was kind of demonstrating at the beginning was just some of these new tools and just exploring what they can do. I'm not abandoning what I had here. Uh, we might bring it back in some way, shape or form. Uh, but uh, yeah, still just exploring here. Testing out how the sculpting feels. And I, I gotta say it feels very performant, responsive. So again, just looking for that graphic read, the silhouette. Do I like it? Yes, no. Um, if not, why not? What can I change? Those kinds of things. All right, move tool. Let's make some kind of bigger, more drastic changes. See what we arrive at. to orthographic move by mode by pressing uh, five on the numpad uh, and then I'll use my cutoff tool which is here with box mode and I can just drag there kind of get the feet flat if I want um, typically when I do these kinds of things I would use cutoff but uh, I've been looking at some hard surface sculpting videos from Anton Tentinsky I think I'm saying that right uh, and uh, I think they've really sold me on the power of Vox Hide, even for organic sculpting, because um, there's always inevitably like certain problem spots that you get to on a sculpt, like with the nose and the cheek and um, uh, and the upper lip, kind of really just getting into that area and getting the creases just right and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I think with something like a Vox Hide, um, where you can momentarily uh, hide and then kind of sculpt and then reveal uh, you can kind of get to the results you want a little bit more uh, effectively for example right now with the cutoff tool if I were to want to get rid of that I get rid of that back leg by accident I don't want that I could put this on a plane I believe and it only cut to a certain point uh, let's try that. Yeah, so I could do that. Um, but even better is if I go in with my Vox Hide, uh, which is where? Uh, Vox Hide. Okay, so if I were to do Vox Hide now, 
and kind of get rid of that. Uh, I can come back over here. Once I've done that initial cut, I can hold uh, control and re-reveal uh, the part that I did not want to get rid of in the first place. Then I can go to geometry, uh, delete hidden. Um, and that is something that uh, is not currently part of my workflow, but something I will definitely kind of start uh, Im implementing. Um, all right, and then another tool that I use quite frequently is Smooth All. Control Shift S is the hotkey that I've mapped to that. Uh, they've introduced a new thing where uh, you can pump, put, you, put in a number, so you can go directly to a smooth degree. Uh, and that was newer, added in the late cycle of uh, the last version of 3D Coat. It's kind of neat. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Uh, so a lot of people in the community said, uh, let's get it back to the way it was, where you can kind of spam hit the hotkey uh, and then gradually see it smooth. Uh, so they've they've given us this uh, checkbox, skip this dialogue next time, just smooth once. And that's what I would generally use uh, so that I can basically keep pressing that and I can watch my forms kind of, yeah, erode, but at the same time, uh, kind of get a little smoother, a little cleaner, right? Um, I can work more globally that way. If I have very thin forms uh, in voxel mode and I need to kind of resample, uh, I'll in all likelihood lose that. Um, or if I want to increase the resolution of the layer, um, so if I hit the increase resolution here, uh, I might lose some things. So to keep that, uh, you wanna at this point switch from voxel mode to surface mode. Right? And then it'll just basically take that mesh and turn it directly into a surface base mesh. Uh, and then you can uh, and then you can increase resolution from here uh, as you see fit. Uh, we can still do control shift S right, to smooth incrementally. It's a little harder to notice here on a sculpt mesh or on a surface mode mesh, but um, that is there. Just back up a few times. Uh, and then we can go in with our surface brushes and uh, kind of work out the form even more. Pinch brush is also one of my favorites. Uh, I have another video uh, specifically on what you can do with the pinch brush, but in the pinch brush you can really kind of specify the forms. You can kind of get closer and closer to a kind of final silhouette kind of forms. And, and this is the point I would probably take it to um, prior to a remesh, quad-based remesh. And then uh, this is at the point, it, I would imagine, if it were for me, if I were gonna take it into another application um, after I kind of go in with the surface mode uh, and just really nail down my final forms, uh, that's the point I might take it into ZBrush. So what I wanna see, uh, and I'll continue to test it, it may or may not happen today in uh, 3D Coat, is whether or not uh, the kind of final level sculpting has gotten better. And I was able to kind of, I think, get things to a pretty final looking state, at least based on, you know, my goals um, already. So I'm just hoping that it still continues to get better so I can kind of just get, you know, uh, even more of the high frequency details and really clean forms and, and everything like that. Um, so I might switch to a uh, matte cap shader. Um, just so that uh, I can kind of read the shapes and the, the form a little better. Uh, so I'll go up here. Uh, I have this one here. Uh, I'm gonna turn off, uh, turn off cast shadows while using it. Okay, uh, and so now you can see we get a better sense of the forms. Um, I do have some issues here that I like to clean out. So uh, I have my shift action in, in surface mode. This may also be present now in voxel mode. I just, I didn't check, but uh, we have a shift smooth and a control shift smooth. Uh, and we actually have drop down menus here where you can choose what it's gonna do. So you can go through that and just see what each one does. Uh, I have my control shift set to powerful smooth and my uh, shift set to super relax. Typically I would use anti bump. Uh, super relax is also kind of nice. Let's just see what that gives us. It looks like super relaxed might have a bit of a bug right now. 
Let's try um, anti-bump. There we go. So anti-bump smoothing uh, will generally give you a really nice, clean overall shape. It'll get rid of like some of these jaggy uh, parts that I have here. Also trying powerful smoothing here as well. And one of the things I I'm really like is very clean, smooth meshes. Like where I want it to be smooth, I want it to be very, very smooth. Um, and so that's kind of the one of the things that I've found certain ways to do that. 3D coat, uh, and sometimes it re inquire, requires jumping back and forth between voxel mode and surface mode, uh, letting go of some things um, before bringing them back later. So I'm just pressing Control Shift S. I really like the smooth all in voxel mode. See how clean and smooth uh, the overall form is. Uh, and now I'll just jump back over to surface mode. Okay, and then I have this. Uh, if I wanted to keep this, I would have to kind of go back and uh, and rebuild that. So let's actually just do that. Uh, let's do it in voxel mode. Uh, I can use the, there's a bunch of ways I can do this. Uh, let's use the pose tool. Oops. Okay, so there's uh, some new kind of gesture based um, Manipulation tools, so X, Y, Z, if you press them, um, if you're used to using them for a hotkey, if you press them now, uh, they will be mapped to, like X will let me just move my mesh on the X axis. I can right click to uh, go back to where it was. Y, of course, will let me move up and down, uh, and Z will kind of move back and forth, forward and back. Left click to confirm the movement, uh, right click to cancel it out. Um, so I, I'm, I, I have to get used to that, that kind of, it's a lot of, again, control, right? Like right at your fingertips. Um, so it's easy to maybe press it, press that accidentally and, and kind of move your mesh without realizing. So I have to kind of see how I feel about it. But anyways, um, here I am with the move tool. I'm going to set the move transpose mode to, uh, line. I'm going to. Just drag a line here, like so. I'll just move this up into the rest of my form. By virtue of this being voxel mesh, this should just all merge together. All right. I'm gonna hit voxelize immediately here, uh, just to make for sure that it is uh, linked up, connected. Um, all right, so I'm much happier with the overall kind of forms. Uh, press Control Shift S here, smooth all a couple more times. Um, I might even increase resolution, uh, get up to 2 million triangles and then jump back over to surface mode. Uh, and now I'll go in with my pinch tool change the alpha and then go in and just again further speak to some of these uh, forms that I want to have and you notice that my pinch degree is not at 100% uh, and also I've removed stretching turned on So I'm starting with a clean shape, clean forms, uh, and now I'm kind of s specifying kind of the details and uh, the differences that I want to exist. Uh, the neat thing with this pinch tool is if I hold control, it will lift up. And 
so this is where uh, for me it's a fun part because I can add kind of extra forms and details that are generally going to be uh, subordinate to the underlying shapes that I've currently established. I can change my alpha to a sharper alpha uh, to get an even kind of firmer edge. I can use this. This is not just for, you know, um, pure detailing. I can still speak to the form uh, at this stage as well uh, with the pinch brush. Uh, so another thing I'm uh, a fan of, especially if I make it big like this, uh, I can go in and kind of create more of a form change than I might have had previously. So I want to think about where do I want to have like the most detail, uh, you know, using texture, I can kind of tell my audience to look more at one part of the mesh versus another. Uh, so, uh, you know, I can make it so that um, the face is more uh, eye catching, you know, than the body, uh, in which case I can get away with concentrating most of my detail, you know, to the face or, or to, to a certain particular area of the mesh. Uh, just holding control here to kind of lift this, these forms. All right, I'm going to be going in and uh, further defining it. Gonna check uh, my stream on YouTube. Alright. So yeah, and constantly zoom in, zoom out, make sure that uh, your just make sure that um, the changes, the detail changes you're making uh, are they're relevant to the overall. Um, it's very easy to kind of get caught up and uh, focus on details. And actually, you know, what? as I say that to myself, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come out further still using the pinch brush, uh, but work with a bigger alpha and kind of make sure that I'm making these adjustments uh, within the context of what will this look like, you know, from far away. There's another thing we could do uh, if we want to be able to work small and big at the same time. Uh, we can use our instance instancer tool. Uh, so what I'll do here, uh, I will make an instance of this uh, right quick. Can I make an instance? Um, clone, okay, clone instance. Okay, so now I can make an instance, I can put it over here make it smaller just on a transform level let me put it wherever i'm working okay uh, so this is my instance version uh, and this is the actual sculpt you can work on either but any change i make to uh, this big one you'll see it get propagated to the smaller one after so this is kind of a neat way to, to work and um, be able to visualize, you know, at simultaneously uh, what big adjustments you're making and how they're affecting the, the smaller version. Or sorry, what small changes you're making and how they're affecting the, uh, 
uh, the overall silhouette. Uh, and this is very common, you know, if you're coming from, if you're a concept artist or, you know, you're more of a 2D artist uh, coming from Photoshop or something like that, or you're used to working that way. It's common in a application like that, you know, to have the mesh that the canvas that you're working on and then a kind of like a little a separate one, a separate window where you have the, the more detailed version. So this is kind of a neat thing, kind of a little workaround, uh, you know, to get away get around the fact that we don't have multiple windows um, but in a lot of ways just as effective and in some cases potentially more effective because well I would say just as effective maybe not more effective Hit F to change the cursor position. And I know now what I want to make. So kind of settled in. I know what I want to do. It's not this, but this reminds me of what I want to make. So I have a, a, a statue that I need to make for uh, my game. Um, and it is kind of like an angel-like statue. And I think that's what I will uh, I'll focus on. So I'll continue with this for a little bit, see where it wants to go. Uh, and then I will change gears uh, momentarily pull out my reference and make something more specific. But so far, uh, sculpting has really held up. Um, no complaints. It uh, feels really good. Um, yeah, overall quite happy, you know, with the, with the results. And there are a few other things that, you know, to get a a proper sculpt you're, you're gonna kind of still want to do but uh, but we can get so much of what we need uh, relatively kind of pain painlessly uh, working in this way one way that uh, that we also all, all also can work um, which is another good workflow not quite as like fun at the outset I guess at least for me is uh, to break your model up into smaller chunks um, small discrete chunks uh, position those chunks and then ultimately merge them uh, together when we're happy with how the silhouettes of everything uh, read together uh, and I know that's a common workflow in uh, ZBrush especially for like stylized characters and things like that. Um, all right, so let's quickly change our shader. Uh, I usually map that to a hotkey as well. I might as well do that now. I'll go to Windows, uh, Panels, and let's go for Shaders. Oh, so I do have that already mapped. So Shift Space will bring up my shaders. Um, we do have the ability to make some uh, node base shaders. I still haven't had a ton of success with that, so I'm going to stay away from it for now. Uh, but what I'm looking for is a shader with a little bit of a cavity uh, and bump setting. Uh, nothing too drastic, but uh, something subtle. I might have to kind of make my own. Uh, and that might be, again, an area still in this version that uh, 
needs a, a little bit more attention uh, in terms of bug fixing uh, because I have had a little bit of uh, weird results in terms of uh, shaders. Uh, but here's with um, shadows turned on. Uh, but uh, I can go to my render tab as well uh, just to kind of see what that looks like. Throw a light on. I'm going to pull in load uh, uh, light setup that I have from before. These are from older versions of 3D Coat, uh, so they may or may not. I think the lighting model maybe has changed in terms of the values and everything like that. Uh, let's try a different shader. Let's go for our regular base shader here. So I need I might need to lift these. Oops, that's way too high. What am I doing? Increase these values. Try a different one. So this is from the more recent version. This is like a kind of a neat fog setup uh, that I have where things kind of get lost uh, the further away they get. Um, kind of like this, so it's kind of neat. I do, it does kind of get lost if I get too far away, but if I'm closer, it's kind of neat. Um, so it's kind of cool that that, uh, that uh, works. Um, I can see this coming in handy for like concept art and, and things like that. So anyways, uh, that is where I've gotten so far. Um, let's go back to sculpting. Oh, and it looks like the fog effect persists here. Uh, it's probably tied to my shading, my shadows. Oh, it's not. Interesting. So, not sure if that's a bug or intentional. Don't know if I am a fan of that. Let's see, render. Um, simply uncheck uh, fog or where's my fog option here Just load a different set of settings here. Okay, so that's a little dark. Turn that down. That's I think that was one of the issues there. Um, anyways, yeah. So just checking this out, seeing what it looks like um, with rendering. Let's get rid of the depth of field. Okay. So right now, some of the forms still feel a little forced. They don't feel like I've worked up to them kind of gradually enough. Uh, 
so what I'd probably do, uh, another thing is right click and just go to extrude. I might do this in voxel mode. Let's see what, it, what, what we get here. You'll see I have a set of hotkey for that as well. And I'll just usually kind of bulge things out a little bit. Let's do this in voxel mode. Uh, let's go to say, I don't know, one million. Okay, and control E. Might do this a couple of times. All right, so now everything feels just a little bit more kind of organic. Maybe sample just a tiny amount uh, so we get rid of any kind of intersecting meshes. Go back to sculpt mode. All right, and so now at some point you'll wanna go in with your sculpting brushes, uh, get away from the pinch tool uh, and maybe go in with your clay brushes or your rapid brushes. And that's kind of uh, where I'm at now. Um, so here I'll turn on, make sure remove stretching is turned on. Uh, and you can kind of go in and uh, really build up your forms a little bit more organically and make sure that it reads. Better. Uh, more resolution probably wouldn't hurt. This is where you can start adding in like some imperfections and uh, some different interesting flourishes or, or whatever um, to make it look even more believable. You can speak to like texture. And things like that. And the neat thing is with remove stretching on, it, uh, it basically gives me the amount of detail I require for whatever kind of a sculpt adjustment I'm, I'm trying to make. And of course I can go back and forth with uh, my sculpting brushes here, uh, like the rapid smooth and kind of go back to pinch clay uh, to kind of get all the different forms that I, uh, that I require. And you see there's like a momentary pause after each stroke. And that's just it doing the recalculation, the remeshing. Uh, so if I were to look at the wireframe here, uh, you can see uh, once it detects that there might be a little bit of stretching happening, uh, it will remesh after the fact and give me the extra details that I require. Uh, so I can really go in and get unlimited amounts of detail. Don't need all of that, but if I did, it's there for me uh, when I want it. 
So it's nice that it uh, adapts, you know, to, to my requirements, uh, requirements, my needs. Um, and will allow me to really get the form that I'm looking for. Uh, let's change our shader again. Uh, let's change back to our matte cap. Uh, and let's turn off our cast shadow. So here's where I have an opportunity to really sell this. Uh, it's just in this transitions. If I really work the transitions, you know, how does one area of the sculpt connect with another area? Um, if I can make that look organic and realistic and believable, um, you know, people will start to accept that you know this weirdly proportioned kind of alien creature. Maybe it's legitimate. For some, again, this might be the amount level of detailing you'd rather do in um, once you have a quad base mesh, right? You can step up and down through subdivision levels. <coughs> Just so you have may maybe that much more of a non-destructive workflow. But uh, another cool thing is uh, a lot of this is uh, all of this should be on a sculpt layer. Uh, so if I go to my paint tab, uh, you'll see a, a lot of this surface level sculpting detail. It's, uh, it's on a layer here and I can change the opacity so I can dial this back some if I want, right? Sorry, not the, uh, depth opacity here. Sorry. There we go. So we can kind of, we can even go beyond what we had. <clears throat> so we can kind of fine tune uh, the amount of extra detail uh, we want to have, like so. Uh, and we can make multiple layers. So I can call this, I don't know, SL1. And I'll, I'll, I, admittedly, I do not typically use sculpt layers. I see the potential. Uh, I've just not. Not really thinking about it while I'm sculpting. <clears throat> so I may want to uh, increase my overall resolution. Just so I have more to work with. Okay, uh, and then basically we kind of just continue to work through the, the form like so. I'm not super happy with the face. Let's see if we can't uh, adjust it. And the neat thing about 3D Coat, uh, pretty much you can never, you're never stuck. Like you always can um, make a change or an adjustment uh, and kind of get closer uh, to what you want. So I mapped things out with a pinch brush, but now I'm going in with my uh, rapid smooth. I can also use clay. Let's go with a something like this. Let's go with pressure to get uh, more organic looking shapes and forms. I'm thinking about, you know, what do I want from this face? Again, not working from reference or design, uh, which is 
probably to the detriment of the sculpt that I'm making. But uh, I am thinking about, you know, do these shapes work? Yes, no. Um, consciously thinking about how I might, you know, change things to to improve upon it. I'm uh, definitely feeling that I need more topology, turning and remove stretching onto this tool. Uh, you can work without remove stretching too, it's, it's up to you, and then subdivide when you feel uh, necessary. And that's more of a kind of a traditional way to work. I'm seeing like kind of like a manatee. I don't know what a manatee looks like. I'm looking at it kind of interesting I like the face better but I feel like the um, proportions are off face feels head feels too thin too small um, so let's see if we can't go in with our move tool and kind of make that work more nicely move tool is uh, one of the most powerful brushes and this, again I can't get in and have can't say enough how cool it is to have that little instanced version of our character there. And we'll want to do uh, more with the legs as well. Um, get a nicer treatment there overall. Uh, and I think it's not just the head, the shoulders seem too narrow. Also, Right, so, so those legs need some work. Uh, so I'll start with my pinch tool. Really do my best to define what's going on here.
I'll just highlight a, a kind of a, another couple of cool things. Uh, 3D coat previously didn't have the greatest like kind of a uh, chamfering tool like an edge kind of we'll see you'll see what I mean uh, I forget the name of the tool is in ZBrush but uh, ZBrush has a pretty neat ability to flatten things uh, let's go so if we go to flatten trim adaptive so this is actually pretty from testing from what I've seen uh, it works actually pretty nicely um, let's try changing the alpha here uh, and it does a really solid job of, of getting us giving us that uh, that shape that form uh, offset slightly in terms of symmetry I'm just hitting control Q here to get that uh, symmetrical but you see that I, I can kind of get that nice trimmed edge let's see if that has issues as well yeah it seems like this is slightly offset it could be that my model I might have moved it off center slightly. Um, but I'm not sure. Oh, and I got a little bit of a mesh corruption issue there. Um, I'll just continue uh, and then kind of afterwards go in and uh, try to fix things up. So I'll go in with my pinch tool here. Let's go for the bigger form. I really want to get this to read a little more smooth and clean. Now uh, you see the like slight divots that we have there. Let's get some more definitive kind of cavities here.
So I'm trying to go now with big shapes and break it up with like slightly smaller shapes. Uh, just so it doesn't look like unfinished or too unfinished. I want it to kind of appear. So everything kind of has a fairly, uh, has been fairly evenly worked over. Um, So I'm trying to deliberately introduce some imperfections. I'm kind of doing a lot here without taking stock of what I'm doing. Um, so I have to be careful. Uh, and here, what I'm finding is it's a little too like, um, looks like a cape or something. So I'd like to find a way where I can get these forms to better integrated. So one thing I, I want to do, uh, kind of lost, is I want to unify the mesh some more. Um, before I continue too much, uh, and let's get some more noise, uh, uh, high frequency DBT detail on these guys. Actually, let me uh, get these shapes. Oh, so you see, I, I accidentally move things a little bit. So I really like using this pinch tool with like a very large alpha or a large brush silhouette. Uh, kind of get some really interesting results that way.
it's pretty interesting that I could get all that just out of the, uh, the pinch tool. So that's some noise, some procedural noise. Right, so get these guys going too. One last thing I'll do here on the tops. It's a little too flat.
right. Let's get these arms going too. Turn this little guy off. Um, all right, so I have a lot of kind of like a foundation here. I have to decide how far I want to take this.
So here I am just continuing to work the transitions uh, so that it doesn't look, you know, um, too incomplete because I'm not, you know, going ever, ever over every last part with like a fine tooth comb um, just based on you know, uh, time. So here we have that. Uh, I think one last thing I might do is I might go in with a, uh, say my draw brush. Let's get an alpha. I don't have all that many alphas, but uh, Symmetry momentarily. <clears throat> and this is something that actually probably would have been good to put on its own sculpt there, but you know, again, not a regular part of my workflow, but maybe something I will uh, kind of be more deliberate about next time. Do a couple other things. Right, uh, let's go with a different shader again. Let's see what that looks like. Proportion still needs some work. Uh, I think the whole lower body relative to the upper body is a bit problematic. Uh, something I might still change. Um, same thing for the arms. Go into my uh, move tool. Oops. What's going on here? Line. Oh, my 
brush now. Let's turn on symmetry before we do this. Looks oh, like I already missed it. So what I'll do is uh, symmetrize here. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. It's going to symmetrize all the little <clears throat> noise and stuff that I had there too. Uh, so let's back up, back up, back up, back up. Let's make sure symmetry's on. Hold down shift to move our gizmo by itself. Yeah, um, still more I can do here. Uh, try not to get too carried away. So it's, it's coming, I think. A uh, couple of small tweaks. Let's go with our move tool.
All right. Um, let's try. Okay, so I uh, feel better about this. I think the overall silhouette is nicer. Um, I might just tweak a couple more things here. Uh, if I get this to kind of hook up, um, that's kind of nice. Yeah, I think that's uh, even stronger. Uh, let's see if we can't do just a little bit. And these arms are kind of the weakest part. It's good. Topological again. And I think that is a probably a pose tool thing. Oops. For now, I think I'll live with uh, with what I have here. Um, let's just quickly see what that looks like rendered. <clears throat> kind of interesting. I think some parts still need some definition. 
but it's not too, too bad. I got a question if I'm just playing around or this for something. This is just experimenting with the tools uh, more than anything. Uh, I could use it for something. I'm making a game, a space game. It doesn't really have aliens in it. Uh, it's more so robots. But if I were to put aliens, I, I could use this guy. Um... Yeah, but I, I, I think I'm feeling the silhouette overall at this point. I like the legs. I like the body. Yeah, I think it uh, it works. The arms are probably the part I don't like the most, uh, but uh, uh, I think I, I, I can live with that. Um, the next thing I would probably do is look at... I'll save this. I should have been saving it. Uh, there is a nice autosave in the program, so... That kind of will save me if I don't save. Uh, let's save as. Um, oops, four legs. Uh, so let's try a different shader. Uh, and then there's another thing in the program that uh, that we could potentially take a look at. This is still a relatively low poly sculpt. This is only a million something less than 2 million triangles. So let me, um, so I've had issues in the past with making new shaders. So I were to start with this, something like this as a base, uh, but then right click and hit uh, construct a new shader, I'll call this Creature skin zero. Then I can go in and I can change the colors on this guy. So you see we have a cavity color. Whoops. I like that blue that I had. I can change the cavity color. nice uh, and then we have a bulge color as well for this I'll go for something redder so we could use something like this as the basis the foundation of our textures hit ok and then we can look at what that looks like rendered not bad. Let me get a stronger light in here. Add a light. I like the I like the way like a lot of the body here and leg, back leg is kind of lost in shadow. I think compositionally I think it uh, it's pretty interesting back looks kind of neat three-quarter back looks kind of neat three-quarter front looks kind of neat if we were like right below this guy still kind of like ominous threatening um, for up above still kind of silhouette wise looks good um, so that's kind of the, the 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 test to see you know if this is something worthwhile um, to kind of continue with uh, I'm happy with the silhouette overall again those arms they kind of look like pea pods kind of thing like uh, not sold on them yet uh, I'll think about what I can do um, if anything um, maybe make fingers make me make, make each of these a finger or something like that uh, and make like two or three of them something like that like that might help but um, for now, let's just see if we can dial in some good colors for the light. That's kind of cool, the blue light. Uh, 
Uh, and we have a bit of a rim light going here. Let's get that shallower. Do have some fog effects going. Can crank these values like I did in my other version. I can't remember which values I used. If I set this to say like 300. This needs to be higher. Set this to say three. And we start to get the guy emerging from the shadows. For this to work, I'd need to make sure the fog color and the background color are more similar. So again, small note to the developers, if they're listening, a clear color option here would be nice uh, in our render tab so that we could uh, get that working a little bit more seamlessly. Uh, let's increase the fog power. Let's decrease the fog density. So I'm not sure why it's so blown out like that, uh, why that happens. I don't know if it to increase my silhouette. Um, let's try a lower number here, let's say, I don't know, one. So that's starting to kind of get in the uh, ballpark, I think. And of course this would be better for like environments or, or things like that but uh but yeah so that's a that's a simple creature um kind of like it uh the next piece would be to go in and retopo and then do some painting so there's a couple of things, like we have our sculpt layer here. You can see, whoa, oh, ran into a problem there. Uh, that didn't exist a little while ago. See if it's, if it's uh, corrupted still in my save file. So again, this is a beta. Okay, so I reopened it, to turn this off. So turning that off is, isn't a no-no. Uh, don't save. All right, so let's make a new layer here. These are paint layers, by the way. Uh, I'll go over to our paint tab, uh, and then now I can go in if I want. I can bake my ambient occlusion and my curvature. Uh, what I Okay, so let's just do that now. Uh, 
textures. You might hear my computer fan go nuts when I do this. Calculate occlusion. Let's calculate also textures, calculate curvature. Okay, I'm just going to quickly see what that curvature map looks like. Too bad. Can always go in. Just gonna unlock this. Go to textures, adjust, smooth current layer, turn preview on. Uh, and just put a few smooth iterations on that. Let's see what kind of results you get. So it cleans up some of the noise, we lose some of the details, <clears throat> but still gives us a pretty decent result. Let's set this to say four. Hit OK. All right, so let's make that invisible again. Uh, and so now if I wanted to start working with uh, smart materials, uh, I can. So I'll make another layer for that, or I have a paint layer here already, sorry. So if I were to set a base material with like um, this plastic, let's turn these guys on. And I'll go to my fill tool. Let's hit fill there. And unfortunately get that little guy so that issue must be in the mesh somewhere and I just it wasn't showing so control Z back up I'm gonna do something hoping that it will will work I don't think it will let's save this as or save it incrementally uh, let's go back to our sculpt uh, I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer, hide the original, and turn this duplicate to a voxel layer. Let's set it to like uh, 10 million. One, two, three. The reason I set it to 10 million is uh, I have like an uneven mesh right now in surface mode uh, with some parts having more detail than others. By going to a voxel mesh, I'll lose some of that. So uh, I want to make sure that I retain that, the details as much as possible. And if I was really, really doing this, I'd probably do another pass in surface mode. I'd probably go as high as I can, maybe 20, 30 million uh, polygons. And then do a final pass in uh, in sculpt mode without probably without turning on uh, uh, subdivide when uh, what was I forget what it's called you know the function where I remesh uh, when I get some stretching I, I potentially turn that off or maybe leave it on uh, knowing that I in all likelihood would not be going to voxel mode back again. Uh, but to get the really final details, that's kind of what I do. I might go to like a 20 or 30 million triangles, or if I can do 40, 50, or 60, I might might even do that, right? Uh, I haven't gone that high in terms of polygons in a, in a long, long time. But 10 millions is doing pretty pretty decently here on my on my machine. Uh, kind of curious, 
Yes, in the name of testing. Oh, and I'm glad to see that it didn't bring over that issue, that error. So that's a good thing. Uh, so if I were to go and paint on this after the fact, I think I should be in good shape. But I am going to roll the dice here. Uh, I've saved it. Uh, I'm going to try to subdivide this. This is going to be a three gigabyte file, so it's going to get pretty big. I'll probably run out of machine space on my computer here. Uh, and it's going to freeze up, a look, look like it freezes up a little bit, but I should end up with like a 40 triangle, 40 million triangle mesh. Oh, it was actually fairly quick. And uh, it's actually pretty, pretty solid. Like I have a decent, decent machine, um, but I'm actually pleased with the, the fact that this is holding up so nicely. So I'm at 40 million triangles, uh, and that's more than enough kind of uh, topology to work with. Uh, I can just see what this looks like with a regular shader. Um, I can see already that my creature skin for some reason didn't save in here. Unless this is it. Green clay. So here's what I was talking about where for whatever reason the shaders, or is this it? Creature skin zero. Okay, so it is here. It's not updating over here for some reason. Let's see. Yeah, it's not updating in my quick select menu. So there I sure enough I got an error I ran out of disk space. Um, but if I move over to surface mode, it's gonna try to bake the uh, the curvature map and the ambient occlusion map onto this uh, onto this version of the mesh. So it's going to take a moment. So any other painting details that I might have made, it will try to bake them onto the higher poly version. And that's because voxel objects, uh, at least in the paint tab, they can't. Um, so there's not enough disk space. OK, so I have to tidy up my machine here to get some space. But anyways, um, I go back to paint. Let's just see what it's given us. So if I go to paint and I turn my curvature map. If it applies. Okay, so it's still there. I guess it didn't bake on, but it is still definitely there. So we'll keep going. <laughs> and uh, kind of go from there. Um, Uh, but if I were to want to sculpt on this, now I have like more than enough kind of uh, detail to work with. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to go to sculpt. Uh, and I was going to change my shader. Okay. So now with 40 million triangles, if I look at my wireframe, you see how dense that wireframe is. I can easily get all kinds of extra detail. And in all reality, like I wouldn't probably go to these lengths. Uh, let's uncheck, uh, let's uncheck remove stretching. So now see how I can get uh, a lot more kind of a detailed treatment. But yeah, unfortunately, I, uh, I'm at my, my machine's limits. So what I found is like a lot of the tools that I use, they dump stuff on my C drive, and temp folders. Adobe is uh, very guilty of this. Um, and of course, some other tools. Uh, and I'm always finding I have to track down. I'm like, I was like, should have like 70 gigs, you know? Uh, but then it's gone. I'm like, what the heck? Where, where did all that space go? Um, and of course, my C drive, of course, um, and that's where Windows has to store it's be stored and all that kind of stuff. So, anyways, um, I'm glad to see that uh, the performance is good. It's just my machine; I've I've run out of space, and uh, kind of that's the the only issue that I'm uh, kind of co combating here. So, yeah, I think because of that, I'm probably not in great shape for 
retopple and all that kind of stuff just because uh, things will continue to will continue to protest um, try saving this incrementally so the actual save is going on a separate drive that has more space but uh, but I'm running into an issue on my my virtual memory uh, let's see open okay I was gonna try to do some painting uh, but yeah what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open a recent version before I created so much extra geometry uh, and I think this was the version that I was pretty happy with. Yeah, so I'll just with this, I'll go back and I'll uh, still have this. Uh, I'm going to close my, I'm going to end my stream here, guys. I think this is my, my thing to tell me to, uh, <laughs> time to, to clean things up. So, but this was fun. Um, uh, I will try to do this again. Uh, I did have that angel character that I need to make uh, for the game, but uh, but that will come another time. All right, take care, everybody.